So hello and welcome to the Transformational Speakers Podcast. I'm your host, Erin Lohman-Jett, and today we have with us somebody pretty amazing. The funny thing is, we didn't know each other until just a few minutes ago. Yeah, literally. <laughs> right? <laughs> when you see somebody amazing on someone else's Facebook Live, on someone else's podcast, you're like, I need that person to talk to my audience. And so I reached right out and, and I got Julia to come and join us, and I'm excited to have her today. She is an Emmy award-winning broadcast journalist, media trainer, and consultant. She has worked with companies like Chevy, CMA, Shell to elevate the brand through video, spoken word, and partnerships. She is the host and producer of the online show, Create Your Million Dollar Message. And I know a lot of you have a million dollar message. Throughout her career, Brooke has earned work with stars like Jason Aldean, Miranda Lambert, Luke Bryan, and Faith Hill, to just name a few. Julia has covered a wide range of stories, including deadly tornadoes, President Bush returns home from Texas, President Obama's visit to Nashville, where you currently live now, yep. and investigation to one of the country's worst rates of teen pregnancies in Texas, and the CMA CMT Music Awards. I love that she has so many things that are so amazing about sharing your message, and she is passionate about health and wellness along with travel and cooking, working with her two-step, her two-step sipping good whiskey. Working on her two-step. Two-step. There we go. I was like, so what all of our friends in the so South know what the two-step is, and I do love a good glass of whiskey while doing that. Very I much. love it. Well, it's kind of hard to do that at the same time. I mean. Oh, no, but that's what before you get on the dance floor. <laughs> okay. You do the whiskey before. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Some people need a little liquid courage. It's not yeah. me. I'm the girl that will dance in the middle of Costco if the music is right. <laughs> <laughs> I have been known to do that, too. But, I love um, it. I love it. Well, welcome. Kind of Thank you so much for being here today. Oh, I'm stoked to be here, you guys. And this is such an amazing opportunity to just grow. I, I'm so grateful that you're doing this for everyone. Awesome. All right. Tell us, you know, tell us a little bit about how you got started and what was, did you grow up wanting to be a journalist? Like, is this your little, yeah. little kid dream? A little kid dream since the age of 10, I knew I was going to work in broadcast and it had to do with the fact of the Olympics, actually, my family um, always did an opening ceremonies party, quote unquote, because it was the cheap way for my parents to take us around the world. Mom and dad, listen out there. It's a good, a good way to do it. Now, I'm going to date myself, but we had the Globe, actually, and we had the encyclopedias. And I don't feel that old, but there you go. Um, and so, you know, you'd see these pictures from around the world, and I was blown away. And I remember very clearly watching the Seoul Olympics and very clearly saying, I want to do that. I want to take people to other places. I want to show people things they don't normally get to see. I want to give them wisdom they may not normally get to have. And I want to have conversations with people that they may not get to talk to every day. And so I set out to do that. It took me all over the country though. Um, Aaron, you know that thing where people say when you really want it, you'll move mountains for it? Oh yeah. Yeah. And so I did. I I moved to Wyoming where no one would go and started in a small market. And I did it the old way. I did it the 10,000 hours way yeah. where I got the 10,000 hours for more than a decade. You know, I didn't start on air. I started off air and really learned the craft off air, but I was very clear I was going to be on air. My first job was in Casper, Wyoming on air as the weekend weather girl and reporter. That's hilarious. I, I used to live know. in Evanston, Wyoming. What in the audience. So I know how small it is. Or Wyoming. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, it took me all over the country. I moved all over the country. So it wasn't like nowadays you think that you're kind of seeing the success happen overnight for people, be it in social media or be it on TV. And I have to tell you, like, that was my story. My story was about a lot of hard work, a lot of sacrifice. I missed tons of Christmases. And I started out making $18,000. Wow. Yeah. I, I think when we have these amazing dreams as kids, you know, you just want like, that's what I want to be. And, and, and no one really tells you, Hmm, you know what your life will look like? Cause I was a dolphin trainer and I got paid six fifty an hour. <laughs> but that was a dream of mine when I was like five, by the way, that's so <laughs> amazing. <laughs> but it's funny cause the real world hits and it's like, Oh, this is awesome. Is it worth to me to do this and be a waitress at night so that I can afford to live in the Florida Keys. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think it's amazing though. That's awesome. Yeah. Nobody really tells you about how messy it is because it's really right. messy and nobody really tells you about the sacrifice that you're going to have to have. And I also think that no one also teaches this. They don't teach you really how to make money off those skills. Right. Yeah. And how important are what we've gone through, our experience and our stories, how impactful that is and how important it is to share it and that you can get paid to do it. Yes. And that is something that I recently set out on this massive project to do was because I never made any money. I've been, yeah, I have multiple Emmys next to my name and awards and I've been a lot of markets and, um, and TV, but I never really made a lot of money. People would always say, Oh, you're on TV. You must make a lot of money. No, I struggled to pay bills. And I really didn't talk about that until this past year, 2018, about how hard it was. I struggled to pay bills um, never really lived the life I really saw myself living. And, you know, quite frankly, even though I was on TV, I didn't feel like I was having the impact that I know I can do and serve the world with because you were so worried about money. Right. Loved what I did. Loved it. And for anyone right now, I know it's a very, uh, tenuous time right now in the media, what people think, but do know there are people like me who all I wanted to be was a journalist and I covered local communities with so much pride and also vigor and honesty. Yeah. And it's true. I, I think there's been a bad rap around that at the yeah. same time. It's in any industry. If you look at the coaching industry, yeah. you have good coaches and you have bad coaches and it kind of tampers it for everyone else. Right. And some of the things that you're required to do as a part of your job as a journalist, it may not be an in integrity or like in alignment with what you feel, but you have to do what you're told to do because it's your job, right? Yeah. It's not like, you know, uh, you work at like Microsoft and they're like, well, you need to go out there and steal people's information from the other side. It's yeah. not like that, but it's these things that you're put into situations where it might not line up with your values and it's your job. So it's like this, this balance of that for, for a lot of people, I'm sure. And I know, I know we're not the only ones. Yes, I did experience that. But I think you can argue, like you said, in any industry, you find yourself there. And it's in those moments that you really find your leadership. And you, and you have to decide what, where that like non-negotiable is, right? Like, mm -hmm. where does my integrity take me? And because we do, we see so many people out there selling into coaching or programs and then they don't get the, people don't get the results that they're looking for. And it really takes when you decide that you're going to do this, you really need to create what your results are you're going to get for your people, right? And mm -hmm. if you're not doing that, please just get out of the industry. <laughs> you're a great marketer. Awesome on that. Uh, but if you're not delivering, don't like stop ruining it, you know? And, and I think that's like we said, in any, in any occupation, you can have those things. So tell me more about how you kind of like from that, when you really wanted to start making a new, how did you start? What did you start doing? Like from there you went, okay. Yeah. So I actually found myself accidentally in this space. I never wanted to be here. Like it's funny. I know you were a journalist. I was going to be a dolphin trainer forever. Uh, yeah. And it's funny how life can really um, dish you. Can I, uh, some crap, I will use harder words than that. <laughs> um, but in 2017, late 2017, really 2018, I said goodbye to two loves. And what I'm, and I'm going to bring this up because I think so many of your listeners um, need to hear it is that I chose to walk away from an amazing relationship because it wasn't authentically me. Um, we, we parted ways and one of the most amazing men I'll ever meet. Um, at the same time, I realized that I wasn't meant for a newsroom anymore. I wasn't meant to, well, I love, love a newsroom. I wasn't meant to one, be kept in a box of like what I can be and not be, especially financially and where I can go and what I can contribute to my community. Um, and then what, what I can do for leadership and where I can lead. Um, and secondly, I knew that I no longer wanted to tell you about bad things. Look, I was the queen of death and people are gonna be like, oh, hold on. She just went dark. No, no, let me explain. A newsroom is about death. It's about death. It's about corruption. It's about what's wrong in the world. And I realized that in being courageous enough to make some say goodbye to a couple loves, I needed to be courageous enough to say hello to what spoke to my soul, which wasn't always telling you about things that were bad. It was about 
sharing wisdom with people and helping them change their life. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, I think when you, when you're faced with a lot of change, you really look at what do you value, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. what, what's my priority? Yeah. And, you know, I said, let me go back to this too. I, I know some people here are listening to this. You know, I said I was in this beat by accident. Quite frankly, it's because I needed to make money and I knew I had great skills, but I've applied to work for companies and I've, I've gotten over a hundred no's. Yeah. I, I, it, so it's really amazing to me. I haven't been able to land a company, but along the way I started my own company. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes I think the universe works in interesting ways. Yeah. I, I totally agree. Cause I didn't plan on being here either. And even when I was business coaching and was so strong in business coaching, I, you know, the universe provided me this big, uh, booming voice that said, get in your lane. And I'm thinking I'm driving, I'm in my lane. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm in my lane. And, and then I heard the, of course I'm, I'm the one arguing with the big booming voice. Right. And I said, I am in my lane. No, the lane that we created for you. Mm. And it made me realize that I really do. Yes. I bring the business coaching aspect to making money around your message. It's one of my geniuses, revenue generation, marketing, sales, conversions, all of that is amazing. And it's also getting people to change the world. Right. And so when I went, well, why would I want to work with speakers only? And I started realizing it's because I know that my, not, not just my voice or not just my message will change the whole world. That if I help other people that are doing the same thing, I can change the world because the ripple effect that they get to make mm-hmm. is in a piece of just a little bit that I got to participate in. Yes. And, you know, I think that you, you brought up something about changing the world. You know, I, I really realized that, like, in order to make that change, you have to have fire. So that's another thing I, I, I encourage your t- listeners to think about. Like, if there's not fire in what you're doing, be aware of that. Yeah. Um, and I had to be aware of that. I had to be aware that um, a newsroom was making me an angry person and I didn't want to live my life like that. Right. But so I thought I'd land in myself uh, another integrated media gig or media relations. I really thought that was what's going to happen. It just hasn't happened. So along the way, I started my own business and helping brands basically elevate through video and spoken word. And that is brands being companies or that's brands being people, both a brand, right? Yeah. And then talking about how do you elevate across multiple platforms? Because I believe now that you need to think of yourself first as a media organization and secondly, that you sell shit. Right. (laughs) It's totally true because that's the outward face. That's what everything's out there. If you're not putting yourself out there, people don't know. They can't, A, they can't relate to you. B, they're like, well, why would I buy your whatchamacallit and not that whatchamacallit? Like you have to create your own brand story uh, with your messaging that lines up with what you deliver to your audience. Yeah. And you also have to think about giving, right? So it's a give to give, not a give to get. Right. And man, that was what was so hard for me, you guys, so hard because I was so desperate uh, to make things work. I was so desperate at the end of 2017, beginning of 2018. The guys, I'm talking like broke, like so desperate to make the work that everybody I approached, be it looking for a job or be it a possible client, was all give to get, all give to get. But when I was able to make this switch, and it was a very clear switch. I remember around Memorial Day weekend, 2018, something just switched in me. And it was suddenly I was like, well, if you're here, you better start to have fun with it. And two, how can I make this person better, right? Or how can I solve their problem? And when I really just kind of was able to kind of get into that and like find it and realize that's something that I do really naturally, because most people do that. Most people, if your friends hurt, you're like, oh man, can I bring you some, you know, uh, a bandage? Oh man, if, if you're sick, you're like, you want to bring your friend us some chicken soup. It, it is in most of us, right? And so those are the ones that I decided to start surrounding myself with, a bigger community that was in that way. And it really just started to have to shift internally. But I'm going to tell you, the energy that you put out is the energy you get back. And people were running from me. 
<laughs> and I'm a person who loves a party, loves a network. I, I am very good at that, but I had never experienced anything like that because I was doing give to get. Yeah. I call that commission breath when you're yeah. so desperate for the dollar that you're, you're thinking about how, how can I spin this to get, and you're just doing that. And so you're not even really present. And I, I get reprimanded all the time from my friends, from coaches, like you give too much, Aaron, you just tell her, like, because that's just who I am now. Like I just give. And if people resonate with me, they want to work with me. They will. If not, I, I still gave them. I still did what I'm here at my servant's heart, what I'm here to do. And so to me, it doesn't matter. And it just becomes so natural that literally when I can be at an event, I, I give in to everyone that they line people up. You got to meet Erin. Oh my gosh. She's so amazing. People line people up to introduce to me because they think they need, they, they need to know me because I served all of the other people. Right. That's the thing that I think people don't realize when you, like you said, when you put out the energy, you get that back. That's what happens. Those things start to being created because you just come from that place of just to serve. Yeah. And you know, I realized this, um, what I loved about a newsroom was that I would go out and I'd be the first to know, and I would go out and talk to these amazing people. And then I would be like, Oh my God, I'm so excited to share this with everybody, like millions of people. And, um, when I could start to like funnel that energy and be like, Oh my God, people need to know this. Just like when I was telling you about something in the news, it's the same thing. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's the exact same thing, except I'm just not telling you about anything negative. I'm not telling you about right. <laughs> car crash or that there's a tornado coming. I mean, those are the things I'm just not telling you. Yeah. I just don't, I, I'm, I'm not paying attention to that stuff. I'm only giving you the positive now. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me about this new thing about getting clear on your message. How do, how do you think people should get clear on their message? Like, how do you, like people come to me all the time, like, I don't even know what my message is. So how do you walk people through that? Yeah. So usually there's a lot of digging that goes on. I start with um, asking some questions of, well, what are you doing? What are you selling? Why are you selling it? What problem are you solving? Who's your ideal client? And then I, I just ask this, why should I care? Like, that's my number one thing. Why should I care? It's the same thing that I used to say to anyone who wanted to get on like a story. I'd be like, ah, so why do I care? Like, why do I care about it? Uh, it doesn't matter to me. So like I literally like it as a, in a newsroom, you're all kind of, kind of playing defense to your audience in a way. You're like, there's all these people who want to come on and be on TV. And I was always like the sorter. And I'm like, no, my people don't really like, I don't care about that. Like, like, give me a reason to care. What's my hook? Like, how does this make me better? It's the same thing. I think when people are trying to find their message, it's so the people you're speaking to, why do they care? Right. What's in it for them, not what's in it for you. Right. Yeah. That give to, to give and to receive back the energy that you're putting out. Right. Mm -hmm. If you get on stage, you're like, look at me and my big car and my big house and my yachts and my jets and all this stuff. The audience is like, um, I can get out my phone. I can pay attention to whatever else I want to pay attention to because that's not relatable to me. Oh yeah. From the stage, it's all about a give. So it's a giveaway. If you want to think about it, this, it's not a takeaway. So if you really want to build a smart business, it's a, it's a giveaway from the stage. And then you need to have different strategies on the back end, and depending on what stage you're on. As you know, the TEDx stage is completely a giveaway, completely giveaway. That's it. Yep. That's it. It's just like you're working in the media. You're giving that content away and you're just bettering the world for it. If you're on a different stage, as you know, it's the smart business side of it, um, which at first I didn't know, and I've gotten really good at is then a strategy that you build in on the back end. You give away and then you show them how you can serve them a little more. Yeah. And I think the thing that people get stuck in with sales, if you, if you want to say that from stage is that you get all the people's energy changes when it starts talking about money and that, that throws people off. But also if you just say, Hey, if you like what I've said, like in the energy, if you like what I said, I've resonated with you, you know that I can take you to the rats to the top of the mountain. Why wouldn't you just link arms with me and go with me? Right. But we I, make all this other stuff up about, Oh my gosh, what if like I have 50 parts of my package and I have all these things. Nobody cares. They just need to know that you are the person that they feel comfortable walking to the top of the mountain with and that you know the, ro the route to the top of the mountain. Right. Like it's like, it's just an offer. Like, let's go to, let's do this together. 
Yeah, and I have to see though, as a consumer, that you've given me a lot of value already. Because I ain't going to the mountain if you don't give me value. Right. <laughs> right. You got to get them to the bottom of the mountain even. Yeah. And then tell them about how you get to the top of the mountain. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then you can say, now, if you want me to show you, let's go together. But it's yeah. that simple. It's that simple. But I think we all complicate it going, oh, but it's got to have this pitch and it's got to, we're all numb to that anymore. It doesn't work. Being authentic and aligned and just sharing like, hey, you could do this by yourself or you can do it with me, whichever you choose. It's okay. Yeah. And I, I think the word authentic is a very powerful word. It's a buzzword right now. Vulnerability is a buzzword right now. And the way I like to say it is be messy. So, and this has been really hard for me. Um, I am a very like authentic person. And if you guys were to meet me and you like, we create relation. I'm like, I, if I saw Erin, I'd like run up and give her a hug. Like, that's just really who I am. I'm kind of the loudest person at the party. Yeah. I'm Next to me. I don't know. Yeah. We'd have fun together. Yeah. So, but, but it's cause I'm so excited to be around and connect with people. Like, it's about connecting with people. But that said, I really think it's important. Um, when you are talking about vulnerability, like that you almost have to step into a place that's uncomfortable. Right. Cause you think you're being vulnerable, but then you're not. And I say all this because let me explain. So when I was on air, you know, to try to get, you're really bad when you start out on TV. Like I was really bad, really, really bad. And to get are. good at it. And you no, know, I mean, nobody's good at when they start out something, but to get good at it, like I realized I thought I had to be this like perfect person. There was no emotion. You had to have like that, that news voice and, um, and everything had to be perfect. Well, look, you need to have your credibility and you need to have things, your facts correct. Absolutely. But when it came to like really just kind of digging into what the story was about, you know, if, if someone had just, if we had been standing in a flood and I had been dealing with a family who had just lost their house, you know, there was a couple of days where I had tears in my eyes because I had been with the family crying a short time ago. Or when there had been an awful, awful wreck that I had to cover and lives were lost and it had really hurt my heart, tears in my eyes. But at the same time, man, I, I love some good county fairs. That's right. I love it because I've covered a ton of them. It's the most random thing, but I do, um, I do love a good county fair. And so I used to be doing all these fun things at the county fair. And my girlfriend was like, that is so you like I'm loud, kind of ear to ear, like super excited. And again, that was really authentically me. And when I started to show that side, um, the results were in the numbers. Like we were getting better hit um, ratings and um, a couple of the newscasts that I worked on, we moved to like number one. I was part of that, part of those teams. But it was that we were doing segments where we were like doing challenges or super vulnerable. And we were really showing our side of who we are. Yeah. Because then you're in alignment and people can feel it. Hey, you know what? Life's messy. Nobody's perfect. No. And I think you're right. That's what's been missing. And so we see this immediate like overnight success, but really it was never on an overnight success, right? I remember watching Gary V's wine show on YouTube and on video. And cause my friend at the time, his dad and him owned a wine shop and I was like, oh, okay. And I was like, well, I still thought he was cool. Cause he had his like own TV show in a way. Right. So I yeah. thought that was cool, but we, you know, then people just go, oh no, he just turned around and has this million, you know, multi-million dollar company. No, no, that's a decade in the making. Yes. And we don't just roll out of bed and it all works out. Right. We have to work through it and we stumble and fall. We post something and no one sees it. We, you know, send out email blasts thinking, oh my gosh, this is going to fill my program and nothing happens. We've all had that. And so when you can share that, like I share all my messiness because I also know that because I've went through that, I know I can show you the right ways and maybe the ways like, you know, this didn't work for me. And so by it not working for me, I know I can share that with people who are a couple steps behind me. And so it's really important and it makes you relatable. I mean, I faced eviction. I get it. When you talk about not being able to pay your bills, I faced eviction. I looked at food stamps. Like I didn't know how to help my family. And I didn't realize that I wasn't closing deals and I didn't know it was wrong until I did my own you know, deep dive into that. But it took me time to figure that out. 
And so knowing that, knowing that no one's perfect, no one has it all. It's just looks good on social media. It doesn't mean that that's what's happening when I'm it's awful here, when you're going through off. it, right? <laughs> awful. So tell us about this million dollar message, the, the summit that you're doing. Tell us about it. Tell us how yeah, we can yeah. sign up so, for it. You know, we talked about it. You asked me about um, how I got where I am. And one of the things I said is that I never learned how to make money. And so um, in doing so, what I decided was that I needed to set out and help people, one, create their million dollar message for 2019 and really kind of start to understand things. And then two, how do you make money on it? How do you make good money? Like big money. Yeah. And then, and so in that, I took a holistic approach about your million dollar message because what I've learned is, is that being on air and, and seeing all these great people on TV, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in the back end. You have to move through a lot of mental stuff. So like, what are those mental blocks that slow you down? I, and you have to move through those mental blocks. And so we talk with some experts about how to move you through mental blocks that are holding you back from creating your million dollar message in your business. I talk to experts about how you step onto a stage and that a stage talk can really revolutionize your business. How can it, but how do you do it? And it's not just about writing in it. It's about like, how do you deliver? Right? A lot of people aren't trained on that. I talked to also some experts about what does it mean to have really good marketing? I'm, I'm talking about really good marketing. And Terry Trespicio is one of those folks who talks about the fact it's, at the end of the day, you need to put a stake in the ground and you need to know it's not about you, it's about your consumer. And then talk in their language. And the, the fourth part of this whole thing was about then how do you make money? How do you really, and, and, and really make money? So I interviewed two of the, some of the, well, three, some really big names. Um, Calvin Wayman is one of them, that's how we met. Yep. And he talks about, oh my gosh, this cycle that I've already started to put in my own life about how to basically get out of debt and how to grow wealth. And it's amazing cycle. And then I talked to um, what, the number one passive income coach in the world. And he talks about then how do you create passive incomes and different streams of money that you need. And then I also talked with coach Michael Burt, who shares a stage with Grant Cordone. And it's really about how to get in and then how to revolutionize your sales. So how to up level your sales numbers. I love it. And you're offering this, and is it, is it, how, how are people going to get a, a, get a, oh yeah, here you guys, here's the deal. The best thing is it's free. Like F R E E F R E E free. <laughs> so, I and I would, I would do capital letters if I could right now. It's absolutely free. I set out to learn these skills and I decided I don't think that I should keep this wisdom to myself. I loved doing that in a newsroom and I got to be around some of the best of the best. And so I was like, I'm just going to create my own show and bring you guys the best of the best. And here's the easy thing that you need to do. There is going to be a link in the notes and it's called million dollar message live.com. But just look at the link, hit the link, drop your email. We get funky on next Tuesday. And I say funky cause I'm so excited about all the fun, funky information you're going to get. I wish you guys like if you guys were sitting with me, I would be doing like jumping up and down because I know how amazing these interviews are. I've spent almost two months interviewing these people and I have really high standards for interviews, by the way. And it's just amazing. And so, and, and also, Erin, you know, your group may really benefit from this. I talked to some also media experts who talk about how do you get headlines and, and how do you not run in circles and like do all this work? and nothing happened? And then how do you run in circles and feel like you're trying to get visibility and that's all you're doing when you're not even making money? Right. I love it. Cause those are all things. And I think it's this, I feel like for the people who are not in media, we, we don't understand how to get media, you know? And they don't understand that some of this stuff is paid. Like you pay for your spot on places. I paid for, I had my own radio show and people were like, oh my gosh, she's a local celebrity. She's got her own radio show before the podcast. <laughs> this is years ago. I paid to play and people are yep. like, you what? I'm like, yes, it's, you know, the, these are all the things that people don't know. So they just go, oh, it's just because they know somebody or they, you know, something happened. No, there are strategies behind it. That you Very need. much so. There are strategies. Very much so. Awesome. But, but, but what people don't understand right now is that I call it feeding the beast. And so if you take nothing else away from this 
podcast today, I want you to hear this, is that if you're looking for media attention, it is very possible for you to get it if you do the foundational work. And here's the foundational work that you're gonna need to have. You're gonna need to have a website in place. That's the first thing. Because if you send me something inside a newsroom, the first thing I'm gonna do is go to your website. I wanna know who you are, what do you do? The second thing is that you need to look good across your platforms. Is it on socials? What, what do you look good online? What do your platforms look like, okay? The third thing is going to be is about then thinking about what you have or what you're doing and how does it impact the audience. It goes back to why do I care? Right. Why do I care? And so I'm going to give you a little hint. If you're doing something with your organization around say like July 4th, right? And it has something to do with July 4th and veterans. I'm just saying that. That would be a great reason to reach out to a news station because it is timely. It's tent pulled around a major event that happens in America, which is July 4th. It's in step with the theme of that time. And around that time of the year, it's kind of slow and content is needed. So that's another hint too. I love it. Around holidays, content is needed. (laughs) <laughs> and that's the thing. I think people don't realize that as, as journalists, as reporters, you, you need people to bring you stuff. Like you don't just, absolutely you have to find it somewhere. So it's like, they're looking for you. You just need to be timely and, and content specific so that they are like, yes, you. Yeah. And you know, one of the other things is, is that think about when you're sending your emails. Most people don't think about this. I one time got an email at like two forty three in the morning. Now, I was going through emails. I worked late. I used to work the night shift. And so I remember going through an email and going, now, 2.43 in the morning. Nobody's ever going to see that. No one is ever going to see that. So I want you to also take this tip away. If you want to be seen, you need to send between 10 a.m. and 1 1 p.m. or 2 to 4 p.m. 9.30 a.m. Call it 9.30 to 1. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for giving us all these amazing things. I know you and I could sit here and talk forever. I love the, everything that you're doing. So for people, definitely, I will put the link in below. Make sure that you get signed up so you get all the information on how you can learn how to monetize your message and make a big impact in the world. And we will see you on stage.